Let's come on in here today. Come on. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Others are coming in and joining us this morning, but we're glad you're here and it's time to start our service. And so we're just going to ask you this morning to stand together with us today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what the psalmist said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here today. More than anything else, we're happy to know that the Lord is here. You know why God is here? He's here because you're here. The Lord dwells among his people. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. He'll never stop loving you. I think it'd be real good if we'll just lift our hands and praise him for that today. Just place this surface into his hands. Pray for his perfect will to be done. Father, we do come before your presence today with grateful hearts, Lord, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we have liberty in the house of God to express ourselves, Lord God, with song, with dance, with shout, with praise, with whispers, with just a heartfelt expression of saying, thank you. Lord, we place this service in your hands. We pray that you fill this service up, Lord God, with your glory, that your anointing would fall, that hearts would be touched, that lives would be changed. We give you praise and glory because we know without you we can do nothing. So we give you all the praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said amen.
cross of Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. The good news is, I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. about my Jesus. Yes. Hey, come on. Give a big shout. Man. Amen. That song just gets down in your soul, doesn't it? Good. Glory to God. Amen. Children, where's our children at tonight today? Come on, kids. Let's come on up here and be dismissed in class. Come on, you guys. Come on up here. All right, all right. Kenzie, not you. They're about your size, but we know how old you are. We know how old you are. We love you guys. We love you guys. I want you guys to know, I want all the children, look, kids, look at me today. Look at me. You guys are the next generation church. Amen. We are thankful and proud of each and every one of you for being here today. God wants to use your lives in a real powerful way. Stretch your hands to the kids today. Father, we thank you for the children or the heritage of the Lord. You said blessed is the man, and I say blessed is the church that has their quiver full of them. We pray your hand come down on our children today. That your spirit, Lord, will be known by them today. That your anointing would flow through your teacher today. Let there be a great move of revival in our youth department, we pray in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Hey, I want you guys to bring that chorus back. Okay, let me take you back to Jesus. We're that, on the same page. You were going to do that again? <laughs> amen. That, one mind and one accord. Amen. We can celebrate Jesus today, can't we? Amen. He's here. He's here. And he's here because you're... Let me just uh, encourage you again to bring your offerings and tithes, if you have one today, as an expression of worship.
feeling it this morning, so you gotta sing with me.
open your hearts to him right now. Lord, we ask for a new song to be poured out on your people, Lord. Let us be fully surrendered to your spirit right now, Lord Jesus. And just hear your people's cry out to you, Lord. Your people's cry, Lord.
in our nation, Lord. Pour out, pour out, Holy Spirit, on our land. We need you, Holy Spirit, for a revival in our land, God. Fresh rain, Lord, fresh rain. We need you, Holy Spirit. kind of worship. Who glory. It's so much. Fits my message this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The title of my message is Searching for a Fresh Fire. Searching for a Fresh Fire. In early 1970, about 71 or 72, I was teaching on out of, Revela out of Genesis 13 and 14 about the story of Abraham and Lot. Now about a month ago on Wednesday night I touched on that here, but real quickly I'll just go through the story for sake of time. You remember the story between with Abraham and Lot. They were, they were living together on the plains with many heads of cattle and animals, and it became a challenge to find enough pasture for them to eat. So Abraham suggested that they part company and go separate ways so they could find feed for their animals. And Lot agreed to it. And Lot took his path and he went his direction. And the Bible says he cast his tent towards Sodom. Big mistake. So you go back in those days when they'd pitch their tent, they'd pitch it toward 
the rising sun or something they wanted to recognize and honor. So when Lot cast his tent towards Sodom, he made a huge mistake because he ended up there in trouble. You remember the story. He, got, he was arrested and all the goods were taken. And the Bible says Abraham rounded up 318 of his trained servants. We don't know how many servants he had in total, but these 318 were trained to fight. He rounded up 318 of his servants and he went in and he took Lot back and all of his property and took him out of captivity. I, I wanted to point out this point. See, in, in those early generations from Adam, that's what I want you to focus on here for a minute. The early generations from Adam. Most of the population on the earth at that time was nomadic. They were nomads. They were nomadic. I have a de definition. They roamed from pasture to pasture to feed their animals. It's a racer tribe that had no fixed location, wandered from place to place. So they were nomadic. And sometimes the camp was so big, it was like a small city. They had many, many... Uh, Abraham was a very wealthy man. So was Lot. They had great herds of animals. But as I was teaching this in the early 70s, the Holy Spirit prompted me to do a study about the early generations from Adam. And I found that <clears throat> at that time I had access to three or four of the books that are not part of the King James Bible as we know today. The information I'm going to share with you, of course, comes from the Lord of God. It also comes from the Bible Dictionary. It also comes from some of those books that I read back in the early 70s. And as we focus just for a moment on those early generations from Adam, the Bible indicates that man had the use of fire real early on in, in the early generations. They had use of fire for light, for heat when they needed it, to cook their meals, and to make their sacrifices. And in every camp, some camps were like a tribe of, of several hundred people, maybe a, a thousand or two in, in a group. Others were just families of, of, of a lesser number. But every camp had a person assigned as the keeper of the fire. Come on, somebody. <laughs> every camp had someone assigned to be the keeper of the fire. And they didn't dare let that fire go out. There was not always lots of wood around, so they used dried animal dung to keep the fire going. This was long before there were ever candles or oil lamps. When candles came along and oil lamps, it was easy, piece of cake, to keep the fire going. A whole lot less work. But every camp had a person assigned to tend to the fire as the keeper of the fire. But if they allowed that fire to go out, that person had to be a runner and go and find a source. It may be hours away, it may be days away. Find somebody that would share their fire with them. And they would use a goat skin lined with dirt. They'd put those coals of fire in there and they'd get back to the camp as fast as they could. And most of the time there'd be a celebration because they had out in the fire back. He would go searching for fresh fire. Sometimes he would find it hours away. Sometimes he had to have to go into the communities and find somebody to share the fire with him. And once he found that source, he would take those live coals of fire, place them in that goat skin, and off he'd go back to the camp. And people were waiting. They were looking. When is he coming back? How long has he been gone? We need him back soon. And pretty soon somebody would make the announcement. They'd blow the horn. They could see him coming with fresh fire. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see the Holy Ghost coming with fresh fire. And when he'd get back with fresh fire, there'd be a celebration. And in some camps, that person would be punished for letting the fire go out. Not all of them, but some of them. And so, as we see here, 
in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, the Bible says we're to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now that word fire not only means power, but it means the Holy Spirit speaking through us by that mighty power. The fire of the Holy Ghost, the part of the Holy Ghost that's active. The part of the Holy Ghost that will do things for us when we ask Him. You can ask Him. And so in this situation, in, in reading some of those the, the books that were not included in the King James as we know it, there, there was a, quite a bit of information about these early generations, how they, how, they, how they came to be, how they developed, how they matured, how they grew. At this point in time, there were, there were other settlements. I wouldn't call them cities because they weren't big enough to be declared cities, but little towns and little gatherings, a place will be centralized where people are gathered. And that's where they go to search sometimes. And then the Bible Dictionary talks about how these nomadic people lived off the land and, and most of their income came from their animals. Various kinds of animals, cattle, horses, sheep, goats, camels in many cases. They, but they had to have the fire. And so today, we have to have the fire of the Holy Spirit. You see, each and every one of us is the keeper of the fire. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You are. I am the keeper of the fire. We don't dare let it go out. Keep the flame going. Hallelujah. Keep the flame going. Because in that is where life is. In that is where the power of God demonstrates himself. In that fire of the Holy Spirit. See, fire does a lot of things naturally on the earth. If we think about, see, fire in the forest has a natural role in the ecosystem if it's managed right. And why we're seeing all these big fires now, because they haven't been able to do that. The environmentalists shut us down. The air quality folks shut us down. But I want you to look at this for a moment. Visualize this person that let the fire go out. And his responsibility for that camp to survive, he's got to go and find some fresh fire. For you and I to survive today, we better be looking for some fresh fire. Has it gotten bad enough yet to motivate you to go look for some fresh fire yet? It will, if it hadn't. Because we're going to get hungry for greater things from the Lord. We're going to get hungry for greater fire from the Lord like we've never been before. When you think about the situation the world's in. We serve a God that is almighty. He knows it all. He sees it all. He has it all. He can do anything. Just like this morning. I thought about my message when the Holy Spirit says, I'm here to heal. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, let's get her done. See, we, we, just, we, we, we welcome God's perfect will in every situation. In His perfect will in every situation. You know, when we've surrendered it all, and I mean all, then God is free to do what He wants to do in our life. Things that we hold back on, we limit God in those areas. But this person that had to, when, when he woke up to the fact that he let the fire go out, I'm sure he probably went under a lot of stress because now the, bird, the monkey's on his back to go wherever it takes, as long as it takes, to find fresh fire and bring it back to the camp. And then they continue on. With, they had light, they had heat. They could cook their food. They could do their sacrifice. And so this, this person who was charged with that responsibility was a big responsibility, the keeper of the fire. Say this, I am the keeper of the fire. Come on, let's say it. I am the keeper of the fire. I am the keeper of the Holy Ghost. I am the keeper of the Holy Ghost, alive and well in me. See? And so when you think about this, see, the, the first mention of candles was like... 2,500 years from Adam. The first mention of oil lights was like 2,400 years from Adam. So we had a period of time about 2,500 years where these nomadic people lived this way. They moved often to find grass for their, grass pastures for their animals, but they never had a permanent address. 
They didn't say, well, the Joneses lived at 204 in the Avenue. They had no permanent address. Because you go one day, they're here one day and they're over there next week. Nomadic. Living off the land and moving frequently. See, we need to be living off of Jesus and on the move continually. Did you get that? On the move continually. Don't, don't, don't stop following the leadership of God. Don't stop listening to God because he's always got, every time he speaks, did you know he's giving you something that's better? You might say, I've got it pretty good right now. I'm just pretty content. Everything's going good. But you know, God don't want you to stay there. He's got something better. And he does it through the fire of the Holy Ghost. He does it through the fire of the Holy Ghost. So today, as the keepers of the fire, what are we doing in our own personal lives? What are we doing in our families? What are we doing in our neighborhoods? To share the fire. To share the fire. We've all got fresh fire if we want it. It's available. We just need to receive it, believe it, and receive it, walk in it. Are we sharing the fire? this morning was purely of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't me. It wasn't Pastor. It wasn't Pastor Larry. It wasn't. It was the Holy Ghost. And he gets all praise the Lord. So I ask you today, how many here today have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues? I don't believe your hands raised right now. How many have, been, have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit spoke in tongues at one time, but it's been decades since he prayed in the Spirit. Folks, if you hear nothing else but this, we need to be praying in the Spirit every single day. Why? Because that's where we keep our strength built up to deal with what's going on in this world today. If you don't have the, the Holy Ghost operating inside of you, if you've never prayed in the Spirit, you're going to be caught short when tr big troubles come because you're not going to have the power you need in your life to overcome. Just let that settle for you. See, I, I hate to say this, but there's going to be a, a lot of people that are going to church in America as the darkness continues to spread across this nation. Things will become more difficult. They're going to fall by the wayside because they don't have the Spirit operating. They may have been saved, but they don't know the Holy Spirit as a personal comforter. They've never prayed in the Spirit in their whole lives. They're in a weakened position. Saved, yes, they may be saved, but they have never been filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We're going to need that kind of power in our life to be an overcomer. We're going to need that power, kind of power in our life to do what God wants the church to be and to do in these last hours. So I want to ask you today, how long has it been since you prayed in the Spirit? There, there's a lot of good saved people. They're, 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 they're living a good godly life. They're doing everything right, but they've just never experienced that truly new empowerment by the Holy Spirit. You see, when, when you have received the Holy Spirit, then you've received the fullness of what God has for you. It comes with all the goods. The Holy Spirit is packing the goods. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Everything you need everything for you to be successful, everything you need to, to be victorious in these hours comes by the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine just for a moment when Jesus himself was talking to the disciples? He said, hey boys, I'm fixing to leave. You better get your act together. I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you empty. I'm going to send you another, another comforter. And he did it. And that 
comforter is here this morning. You feel him in the house today. He's here because he's the provider of fresh fire. The Holy, oh glory. The Holy Spirit is the provider. He is the fresh fire. Hallelujah. He provides fresh fire. He is the fresh fire. And he's here today to refill you and I. I don't know about you, but I say, Lord, refill me every day. Every day, every moment. I want to be full of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this, there's several, there, there, there's words in Matthew, and there's words in other parts of the Bible that talk about the fact that we are God's God's master plan was for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit through baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues as the evidence. God said that had to be the proof. Man didn't do that. Some people balk on that. Some people believe in the Holy Spirit, but they just can't get that thing about tongues. See, the Bible says that's the initial evidence, proof, positive that they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see that we are, each one of us, are the keepers of the fire. And there's there's new fire, and there's fresh fire available for us every day. If you're doing your daily devotions, that's the time when you receive your portion your portion of fresh fire that gets you through the day. Hallelujah. The other day, when this little fire took out here, right in front of the pastor's house over there in the driveway, I was up in the mountains riding my quad just getting ready for deer season. And I topped out at Cold Springs. I saw this header of smoke, and I said, Lord, that looks like it's in Sonora. Well, I got down to about the top of the bypass there. I said, that is in Sonora. And at first it looked like it's about right on the end of, uh, of, of Stockton Road there. Turned out it was just over the hill. So I looked at that and I said, Lord, thank you because there's no wind today. Because had it been a windy day like we had two days before, we were taking out half of Sonora. But God, see, he knew what was going to happen. And there was no wind to really cause much problem. And they did a, good, did a good job on it to put it out. But what am I talking about? This, the, and, and the report is from the Sheriff's Department. I've, I've heard this from two different sources, so I, I'm going to assume it's correct. That, that, that the, the county sheriff's department had given the homeless in that camp there off of uh, Golf Links Road a date to, to vacate. Well, that day, Thursday, was the day for them to vacate. So the sheriffs went in there in full armor and had the people leave and they took their dogs and their cats and their pets and took them to the county shelter. And a lot of people got really, really mad. Well, two of them set the fire. One of them has been arrested and the other one was shot. One of them got back into the town of Sonora and the police shot him. And so there's still a third person they're looking for. But you see how, hey, we live in a weird world. I'm telling you, if we ever need the protection of the Holy Spirit, it's now, folks. If we ever need fresh fire burning in our souls, it's, it's right now. It's right now. You never know when these crazy people are going to do things like that. See? It could, have been that it could have been in your backyard. But as it was, they did a good job on it. And as it was, thankfully, there was enough resources available because with all the fires going on, usually they're strapped for resources and there's no aircraft available. Without the aircraft, that would have been a, new, a whole new story. And so today, if we will fully recognize we're the keeper of the fire in us. The Holy Spirit's the giver. We're the receiver, and we're the keeper of the fire. And we have to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to keep the fire going. We're in the closing days of this world. We're in the closing days of this generation. The church age is coming to an end. And we need to be stronger now than ever before in the Lord.
we need to be <clears throat> we need to be living in our peak performance to God. Full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Having an ear for the Holy Spirit to hear. Because He's available to guide us in every decision. He's available to show us the way. He's able to meet our every need. But we have to keep the fire going. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The keeper of the fire. If you want to read that whole story about Abraham and Lot, it's Genesis chapter 13 and over into chapter 14. And you will see the situation there. This, this, the, the person in the camp that was responsible. The, the duty would shift to various different people as time went by. One person might have the duty for a week or whatever to keep the fire going, and somebody else would have a turn. But if it was your turn, it was his turn. Big responsibility on your back. Keep the fire going. The camp could not survive without it very long. See, you cannot survive very long without it. The minute you think you can step out on your own ability, Listen to me. The minute you think you can step out of your own ability and survive, you just stepped out on a slippery slope. It better be in Jesus. It better be by the power of the Holy Spirit. It better be by fresh fire every day of your life. Fresh fire every day of your life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. The Bible says we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire and power. We see that in, Matthew, in Acts 2, 2, 2 through 4, Luke 3, 16, Matthew 3, 11. And I reminded that in Jeremiah 29, where he said, it feels like fire has been shut up in my bones. That's the kind of feeling we need to have every single day. That we, we have something that explosive. It's explosive inside of us. Wanting to get out. Speak. It's wanting to do something. And Jeremiah said, I feel like fire has been shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Do you feel like fire is in your bones today, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The, the amount of power we've experienced here this morning is enough to move mountains. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you have the fire of the Holy Ghost alive and well in you? We need to pray in the Spirit every day as often as we can, being equipped for the, what's ahead for us. How long has it been? I want to ask you to stand to your feet this morning. Position, you come back if you would, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to ask everybody to just bow your heads for a moment, close your eyes. And just think on these things. Ask yourself, have I really been, have I really received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How have I ever experienced the fullness of the baptism of the Holy Spirit by speaking in the known tongue? If you received it in the past, how long has it been? that you prayed in the Spirit. There's, there's several here this morning that's never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there's those that have, but it's been inactive or dormant in your life because it, it hadn't been manifested beyond that. How long has it been since you prayed in the Spirit? Every single one of us, every one of us, we need to pray in the Spirit every day. I cannot overemphasize that. We need to pray in the Spirit every single day. If you're here this morning and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want you to come forward. If you received it in the past but it's really been inactive because you've never stayed on track to, to pray in the Spirit, you, you, you let it grow dormant, so to speak. I want you to come forward this morning. Because I'm telling you, my friends, church, I love you. I have to tell you the truth. If 
you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you're going to have a rough go in these last days. So first, I want to invite the ones, if you want to be, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit today, I want you to come forward. But if those of you that have been baptized, but you just need some fresh fire, I want you to come right now. In the name of Jesus. Fresh fire. 